In this tutorial, we look at the basic drawing interface. Hover the mouse over the draw suite of tools. You can see there's many different open and closed drawing shapes that we can choose from. Let's click on the rectangle drawing tool and we're ready to begin drawing. Before we do that though, let's see if there's any options for that. Look in the tool options palette and you can see that there's some different icons that control what happens to that shape that we draw. We can make it a 2D surface. We can extrude it into a 3D solid. We can extrude it into a 3D wall, etc. Let's choose the 2D surface icon. So now when we draw the rectangle, it'll remain a 2D surface object. If we want to extrude that into a 3D object, we can select the 3D extrude icon. And now when we draw the rectangle, we can extrude that into a 3D solid. After the object is created, you can see there's a set of controls that can be used to further modify that object. And based on what the object is, we'll have different controls. For example, here, since we have a rectangle, we have length, width, and height. We can also modify these numerically uh, by looking at the parameters here. We can type in numeric information for the length, width, or height. For example, I'll type in 10 feet, enter, and the object then adjust to the new parameter that I typed in. The visible controls will remain visible until we begin our next operation. We can always bring those controls back at a later date if we want, and be sure to see some of the additional Bonsai 3D video tutorials for more information on the visible controls for modifying these objects after they're created. As I'm drawing shapes, you can see that as I move the cursor across the scene that it'll highlight the faces of any existing objects. This allows me to draw on the surface of any existing objects in our scene. Let's look at one option that's related to this. That's the Insert option. With this turned on, you can see that uh, when we draw the shape on a highlighted face of an object, that shape is then inserted into that object. I can add or subtract volume by simply drawing shapes and inserting them on any part or any face of that object. We can undo our actions by selecting Undo from the Edit pull-down menu or using the key shortcuts, Command-Z for Macintosh and Control-Z for Windows. Let's see what happens if we insert 2D shapes on the faces of our object. For example, we have the Rectangle tool selected, so let's choose the 2D surface icon. So now when we draw on the face of the object, we're going to draw the rectangle as a 2D shape, and that is inserted into the face of the object. This is nice for other operations, for example, the reshape tool, which then allows us to take that new face that we've inserted into the object and further reshape it. For more information on the reshape tool, be sure to see the reshaping and offsetting video tutorial. Next, let's create some open or closed shapes using the vector line tool. So let's select that and we're ready to start drawing. Before we do that though, let's look at the tool options palette and make sure that the 2D surface icon is still selected so our vector line will remain a 2D surface object. When we, as we begin clicking, you can see that there's these automatic guides that are created for us and these are covered in a separate video tutorial. If we want to end the line, we can just simply double click the mouse or hit the E key. After the vector line is created, you see we have controls that can be used to further modify that shape. And if we don't like the shape that we have, we can simply hit the delete key and the object is deleted. As we're drawing the shape, if you want to create a closed shape, you can see I simply uh, triple click the mouse, one, two, three, and it'll automatically close the shape. Or I can hit the C key to close it. One more method uh, would be to, as we're drawing a shape, and, and if we want it closed, we can just simply take the cursor, move it at the start position, and you can see there's a little symbol that has a little knot symbol there, meaning that it's going to close that shape for me. So I just simply click at the start location, and it'll automatically create a closed line for me. One more additional parameter I'd like to show with this would be, if I'm drawing separate vector lines, uh, if I were to double click to end that, and then I start drawing another vector line, you can see as I move the one vector line closer to the other vector line there, we get this plus sign, meaning that if I were to click at this location, it'll automatically join those together for me as one continuous line. I can also start a new vector line by joining to an existing line. To simply wait for the plus sign to show up as the cursor's over the beginning of that line, and I can draw, and if I were to go at the other point of that vector line, we see the knot symbol, and we can create a closed shape that way by combining multiple lines together. You can also create composite shapes by changing the different drawing tools in mid-operation. 
as you're drawing the shape. For example, let's start drawing a vector line. And we switch to, let's see, how about a nice little spline curve over here. And if we want to arc in this area, uh, you can see I can draw the arc. And holding on the Option key, I can uh, flip the arc from one side to the other by holding the Command key on Mac or the Control key on Windows. And then from there, maybe go back to our vector line tool. And of course, if I go to the end here, we can then create a closed shape. Later on, if we want to extrude this into a 3D solid, just simply take the Reshape tool, click on the object, and reshape it into a 3D solid object. It should be noted that the undo operation can be applied at any time during the creation of your shape. For example, if I'm drawing a vector line, I can undo the points that I click. So instead of going to the right, I can go to the left. Let's create a few shapes now to go ahead and make sure that we understand the drawing interface. Let's say we want to create a 2D circle. Well, circle drawing tool, 2D surface, and the circle is drawn as a 2D surface object. Let's say I want to create a 2D wall. Well, I can choose the rectangle tool, and if I choose the 2D enclosure icon, then you can see that when I draw the rectangle, it actually generates it as a 2D wall. Let's say I want to extrude an object into a solid. Well, let's take, uh, how about a circle? 3D extrude icon, so the circle extrudes into a 3D solid object. What if I want to create a cone type shape? Well, let's use the polygon tool, and I want it to be cone shape, so let's choose the 3D converged icon, and now that shape converges to a single point. What if I want to make a 3D wall? Well, let's choose a, let's see, how about a vector line? In this case, I'll choose a 3D wall icon, and now when I draw that vector line, it's going to generate it as an extruded 3D solid wall. And the last icon is the Insert Opening icon, which allows us to punch a hole through the object. Let's show that by beginning with a rectangle and the 3D wall icon to generate a 3D wall. And then with the Rectangle tool still selected, let's use the Insert Opening icon. And now you can see that uh, as I draw the rectangle on the face of the object, it will then punch a hole through the object. I can change an option here. Instead of going through just the thickness of the wall, I can go through the entire object. And now you can see that when I draw on one face, it extends all the way through the thickness of the object. So let's extend it on this side. It should be noted that Bonsai 3D contains a place content tool, which allows you to place doors and windows into your model. This is covered in a separate video tutorial. This concludes Basic Drawing Tutorial.